We all have the same aesthetic direction, you know, because this whole thing all came from the blues, and that's where we all come from. We all like the blues, <laughs> and that's the starting point. You say the world is mine. You think that you've been had. You don't like your part in the flow show. You say it's all a bust. There's nobody you can trust. Well, why don't you tell me something, man? I don't know. It's everybody's guess as to who will deliver that next low blow. Suffer from the street, you don't take pain. Tell me something that I don't do. Tell me how for you this record stuff came about. Uh, well, through conversations with uh, Georgie and then with Van about uh, doing uh, some of Moses' tunes, uh, some of the newer tunes, and also some of the older tunes, tunes that maybe Moses wasn't that well known for. I called Moses at home in, in New York and uh, told him about the plans that we had, and he said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. Well, I just always loved, loved his songs and trying to get, you know, more of his more recent songs out, you know, rather than the ones that everybody's heard, like Crown Mercy or Parchment Farm. I'm trying to get some of the other stuff out that no one's heard because the records never got promoted, they got buried. You say there's some mistake You never got your big break You don't like the magic of the Boom, boom You're on a one-way street Your life was incomplete why don't you tell me something, man? I don't know. You're uptight. Yeah. yeah, it ain't right. Oh, well, tell me something that I don't know. I don't know. Van Morrison, ladies and gentlemen. When was the first time that you heard Mose Allison? Uh, first time I heard him was um, Parchment Farm, probably. In fact, I got more into the later stuff. Right. When he was writing, you know, I got into the more philosophical end of it. Because he said he'd been familiar with your music and was, quite, and was very impressed at your big knowledge of the blues and jazz and things, mm -hmm. which I don't think he expected people from the other side of the water to have, you know. Did he have an influence on you straight away? I don't know if it's so much of an influence. It, well, I mean, you can say the influence more with Georgie Fim. I mean, I immediately fell for his voice, like probably countless other people, and it took me a, a little while longer to really get into his piano playing, which I, I really adore now. His lyrics are uh, unbelievable. I used to think he was kind of a, a jazz version of Bob Dylan, if you like. Georgie was saying he thought he was a bit like a, a, like a, a jazz version of Bob Dylan. Oh, yeah, no, no, I wouldn't put it that way, but he's like a jazz version of Lenny Bruce, I think, you know? Yeah. Yeah. If you live, your time will come. If you live, your time will come. Child, don't you mess with that. Cotton sack is gonna bend your knees, gonna break your back, and if you live, your time will come. Said if you live, a day will come. If you live, a day will come. So child, don't you play with those Pots and pans, they're gonna sure enough ruin those uh, pretty hands. And if you live, your time will come. It 
it was early 1962. I'd started working down the Flamingo all night in March 62, and there were a lot of American GIs down there. And the guy that became a friend of mine was Carl Smith, Smitty, and he brought uh, Mills Allison album down one weekend. It must have been about June 62. What album was it? Do you remember? Um, Creek Bank Suite, I think, or Back Country Suite, one of those first two albums. Um, Parchment Farm. Um, one Room Country Little Shack, Mad With You, and a couple of other tunes. They were the first ones I heard, and I was, I was totally smitten. If you live, a day will come. And if you live, your day will come. Sun gonna shine. Crops gonna grow, think that you're not gonna worry no more. If you live, your time will come. When was the first time that you heard a Mose Allison? I heard the Transfiguration of Hiram Brown, the, the record he put out on Columbia years ago, when it was a new record. So I think that maybe came out in 1958 or something like that. And were you immediately influenced by it? Immediately, struck down by it. There was a song in there uh, called City Home. It was the first version that he recorded of City Home. And it's about a young man sitting in a small town thinking about a town, waiting for the day he can make his getaway, you know. And it, I was sitting in a small town thinking, boy, if I can get out of here, that would be great. Mm. I immediately identified. And uh, also musically, you know, I, it was such an easy style to, to come to, you know, the jazz and the blues and everything. And you're saying because it's easy to listen to, it sounds like, but it's quite complicated to play. Well, that particular song, City Home, has got uh, a particular change in it that's uh, totally unusual in a, in a blues tune where he basically goes up a half step and does a two five, turn around and down. I mean, it sounds like a real simple tune, but if you go into any of Moses' tunes, there are little pieces that are uh, unexpected, kind of like Monk in a way. The first time I saw Mose was uh, 1969. I was in New York for a couple of days. I didn't know anybody. Uh, my manager had deserted me to go to corporate meetings. I just looked in the paper and Mose was on at the village gate, so I went down there. In the break, I kind of sidled up to him and said, excuse me, Mr. Allison, you don't know me, but uh, I'm a musician for me, and blah, 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 blah. And uh, he was warm and generous. We had a little chat and he made my day. <laughs> write songs. It's the content of the songs.
Yes. Okay, time to bring him on. Yeah. Right now, we want to bring up the man who made this all possible. He certainly made a lot of us possible up here on the stage tonight. Please put your hands together and welcome Mose Allison. Mose, welcome. I believe you have a message this evening. great influence on all of us sitting standing around the piano here. Who are the people that have influenced you? Well, as I started out listening to boogie woogie piano players, you know, Pete Johnson, Alvin Hamilton, people like that. And uh, Fats Wallow, Louis Armstrong, Nat Cole, Louis Jordan. And I heard a lot of the early blues people, you know, when I was growing up in the Tipo, Mississippi. I mean, I didn't hear them in person. I heard them on the, on the local uh, mm -hmm. joke box. The Seaberg yeah. and um, people like Tampa Red, Big Bill Brunzi, and so on. So I, I got jazz influences and uh, blues influences all, all at the same time, you know. You got to thank him, thank him, God for self love. Thank him, thank him, most for self love. Gospel music, did that come into the influence? Gospel music, to me, is a completely different thing. <laughs> In Tipo, Mississippi, on a Sunday afternoon, you can go by the church and you'll hear the gospel music. You go down to the beer joint and, and you out behind the beer joint shooting craps, you can find the blues people. <laughs> so it was a completely different world. Yeah. You know, I, I've never gone for that thing about the connection between uh, gospel music and blues. You know? <laughs> I'm back on the corner. I'm right back on this corner. I've been to this condition so many times before. I'm back by my lonesome. Right back by my lonesome, just watching the people go from door to door. On this record, there's a lot of your more recent songs, which are mm -hmm. brilliant songs on there. And um, what are the sort of things that get you um, excited about writing? What are the things, sort of things that inspire you to write? You know, I don't know. I mean, the best thing I can tell anybody is that it just comes to me. You know, mm -hmm. you start out with a certain mm -hmm. attitude, and then uh, you get, it gets triggered yeah. by your environment. You know, things that happen to you. So. Mm -hmm. but I don't know. It's, there's no form. I don't sit down and try to write a song or anything. You know. At any given time, I have uh, 50 possible songs, you know, like uh, 
the phrases that could become songs. I'm back on the corner. I'm right back on this corner. I've been in this condition so many times before. I'm back by my lonesome. Yes, I'm right back by my lonesome. Just watching the people go from door to door. Well, I've got to change my ways and try to quit this place. Cause one of these rainy days I'm gonna need a friendly face But I'm back on the corner Right back on this corner I've been in this condition so many times before Why is it you think he's been such a big influence on so many different um, musicians? Especially in Britain, he's very influential. Well, that is interesting. I think maybe in part because there is a real intellectual component to his lyrics, uh, which uh, maybe uh, would have a wider audience here in England. I think also because his approach to the blues is uh, very straightforward. Uh, and I think because uh, some of the key people, like Georgie Fame, uh, discovered him early on and spread the news. Parchment Farm was on my first album with the Blue Flames, which was recorded down the Flamingo in 1963. Of course, the powers that be named it Parchment Farm because they couldn't believe there was a parchment. Um, yeah, from early 62, I was, I was into it. A lot of what happens uh, in the blues is the oral tradition. You know, the stuff goes from mouth to mouth, and I think Moses' name was on the, the grapevine early on. When I become white And we become wet Will there be any sign or a trace of the lovely control of your face? One that I heard that I particularly thought almost brought me to tears because it was so beautiful is when I becomes was. Yeah. Tell us about that. Ben and I were just talking about what kind of material we like to do and uh, Ben was deciding what songs he wanted to sing. And I, nobody had mentioned that, so I, I jumped in for that one. I said, I'd like to sing Wars, please. And it's now become, in the last 12 months, it's become a standard part of my own repertoire with my own band. And now is bad when Will someone have moments like this? It was great because then I went to my record collection to the vinyl and started pulling out all the albums and listening and it gave me a chance to literally listen to I don't know 20 albums again and come up with the tunes and we just we just picked the songs that we like the same basically Saints are just the dark new age of complaints the record very quick to record? Yeah, we, we did it in a day, apart from the horns, which we did the next day. So Ben and I went in with Van and we did, I think we did 11 tracks in the, in the day. The sessions went real quick, they happened in a day. Most of them we hadn't sung before. All these days I'm gonna get things right. I'm gonna start down my business in the daylight. One of these days, you know, I'm gonna get things. Right. We sang them and, and played them live. Everything's done live. We just ran them down. We never did, went beyond take two, and we, we usually opted for take one. Well, that's the way we like to do them anyway, yeah? Mm -hmm. Ideally. So it, it was spontaneous, yeah. yeah. Real music. Yeah. 
I had the idea in my mind for like 10 years, probably. Maybe longer than that. Well, yeah, you know, when I first met Van in California in the 70s, yeah, yeah. he said, I'm going to do some of your songs. I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> so here, here it is. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't take but 25 years, man. Judgey Fett. And you are a literally a professor of uh, music. Don't spread it around. No, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep it hashed up. But, I, but uh, I was just saying that to give cred great credibility to your, your. When I ask you, yeah, right. who, wh why is it that you think that Moses has been such a big influence on so many people? Well, I think in a lot of ways Moses represents the best of what we're trying to do out here. I mean, we're trying to entertain people. We're trying to deliver a message. We're trying to give people something that's inspirational in some way. And uh, for me. You know, it's, it's humor. It's the fact that he's, he's not sugarcoating anything, but he's making it possible to understand concepts and, and situations in life uh, in a way where you can uh, absorb them. You know, I mean, that's the big reason. The small reason is that uh, he's, uh, he's fun to go to listen to. You know, people go, here's gigs, man. It's a good gig. It's a fun, it's a fun, I've heard hundreds of most gigs. They're fun to be at. You know? Some people just never seem to get enough. <laughs> Want salvation, paradise, and all that stuff, but I'm so easy going, I don't even keep score. All I want is plenty, but I will take more. If you ask me, I will take more. Say please, and I will take more. Did you ever expect to record with most? No, of course not. One doesn't. To imagine those things at the time. Um, such is life that here we are, like 35, six, seven years later, whatever, and uh, you're actually working with your heroes. I never thought in my life I would meet the man, you know? And it's kind of being part of a family, really. Talking to all of these artists here, they've all been saying great things about you because they love you very much. 
What are the things that you like about the way that they interpret your songs? Well, each one has its own uh, approach, and uh, they they have all uh, been influenced by me to a certain extent. And uh, but they all have developed their own individual styles. I just happen to be the uh, one one of the first ones to start doing the blues and mixing it in with jazz. And uh, these guys are all great musicians in their own right. And uh, if they if they consider me an inspiration, that's, that's great with me. Why do you think it is that he's been, he's a big influence on a lot of British musicians and writers? Well, I think for a start because he's white. Mm. And he's working in a black idiom. You know, you can call any musician up in the United States, practically, and say, I'm doing a Mose Allison date. And that's all you have to say. Mm -hmm. You know, they're there. I think he's probably one of the most influential uh, composers and, and uh, lyricists uh, of this century. Mm -hmm. uh, probably one of the great unsung heroes uh, until now. said the main thing is to earn the respect of your peers, to have good musicians appreciate what you do. But to me, that's the greatest compliment. You know?